I was born surrounded by injustice, but raised in privilege. My mother was a slave. My father, a man of opportunity and wealth. When my people were robbed of their humanity, I watched. And when the masters brought tyranny to this land, I understood that I would need to become a symbol of hope for the broken. Jason, I have a little bit of a problem. Okay, let's hear it. All right, so I'm not really sure. Um, Your testicle? That's that's mostly what it is. Hemorrhoids. But, you know, uh, well that too, but that's not what I'm talking not about today. Twenty first sex change. Um, let's just put all, most of those things to the side and talk about. Sucked way too much dick this week. How do you judge an HD port of a mobile game? Oh uh, yeah, that's tough because any, of, any, and yeah, it's, ports. That's tricky. Yeah, I mean, do you just judge it as a video game, or like, like it's the question of do you judge, say, 3ds, Vita, PSP games? Do you judge them as like, as just straight up video games, or like this is good for a game that's on a handheld system uh, with that qualifier? Yeah, I think you have to make sure that they're competing within the same. Uh, on on a on a scale, but you can't compare them to just straight up AAA. Got all the no. horsepower game. I don't I don't think so. Well, I, shit. I, uh, yeah, that's gonna make this Assassin's Creed Three Liberation HD port uh, review a little bit harder than I originally thought, because this game. Oh man, there's a lot of potential in here, but this thing is kind of a mess. Oh, it's kind of a fucking mess. So uh, first off, I'd like to say just before we start that I feel like if. This character and this environment, Aveline and and Louis uh, New Orleans or whatever, had been like the the if this had been the main plot of Assassin's Creed Three and had been like fleshed out and everything. Yes, I think that we all would have had a much better time with Assassin's Creed Three. Okay, I think she's a more interesting character than Connor. Mm-hmm. I think she's got a more interesting setting than Connor. She's got a more interesting set of values than Connor. I like her better than Connor. This is what I'm trying to say. You do like playing as women. <laughs> well, does that have anything to do with it? Not really. No. I mean, you know, Connor was just so like, meh. Mm. like she wasn't getting at every opportunity, essentially philosophically butt stomped by everybody that talked to her about what she believed in. Sure, like Connor was in Assassin's Creed Three. But enough <laughs> philosophically butt stomped. We've we've spent so much time talking about Assassin's Creed Three that we shouldn't talk about it anymore. Let's talk about Assassin's Creed Liberation HD. Um, This is an HD port of a Vita game um, (laughs) that he says with no small Mm. amount of ire Mm. uh, that stars. uh, You sure it wasn't the PSP? Shut up, Jason. (laughs) Come over there and butt stomp you. Um, That it basically takes place uh, over the I believe it's over the 1700s with this woman who is a child. Her mother, she gets separated from her mother in Mm -hmm. the bazaar. And then, like, um, you skip forward a zillion years later, and she's a teenager, and she's been taken in by this wealthy family, and she's also an assassin. Um, One of the biggest problems that I have with this game is that the story feels like there are huge chunks that are just missing. Yeah. Like, in the very beginning of the game, she's wandering around the market. This is the tutorial where they show you as a kid wandering around the market. And then it flashes forward, and she's, like, a a teenager or young woman. Um, And she's fighting these dudes, and she's kicking a bunch of ass, Assassin's Creed style. Then she wakes up, and it was all a bad dream. And her stepmother comes in and says, oh, did you have a bad dream? She says, yeah, I did. And then she goes out and starts doing assassin shit. Well, you come to find out that there's like this dude in the Nolan swamps who trained her to be an assassin. He's a swamp assassin or whatever. Um, but we never see any of that. And we don't even encounter her trainer character until way later. It's kind of just dumps us into this game and then goes, she's an assassin. And you go, well, then why did you start out like at the very beginning? It felt like there was a big chunk missing there okay. that you don't find later. Yeah. So there are large parts of this game where you'll do a thing, you'll finish a story beat or whatever, and the game will just flash forward a large amount of time um, with a with a there'll be a, a some text explaining what had happened in the meantime, and then it flashes forward. And it's one of the things that I feel like really holds this back as a narrative is that there are parts of that that it would have been interesting to see rendered as cutscenes, but they obviously weren't because this was a mobile title. Sure, there wasn't as much work put into it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so it just feels kind of weirdly disjointed. Now on the upside. 
um, Aveline, as opposed to Connor, has a much more interesting storyline because her focus is less on the whole Templars versus Assassins thing. Yeah. Whereas, she, well, it, 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 there's a lot of that in there, but there's also this subtext of slavery at the time. Yeah. Um, and how she wants to free the slaves, right? You know, yeah. she's interested in doing that. As an assassin, she's interested in liberty. The Templars are obviously interested in keeping people under their thumb, so they're kind of pro-slavery and she's anti-slavery. It's a much more kind of uh, binary philosophical debate than the stuff in Assassin's Creed 3 where it's like dude, government rule and can people deserve to be free and yeah. who's it, blah, 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 and blah. you're chasing Ben Franklin's diary around town. Yeah, exactly. It, yeah. Um, so there's parts of the story that I feel were really good. Um, the ending totally fucking falls apart. Really? Uh, there's this twist that kind of comes out of nowhere, mm-hmm. doesn't really make much She's sense. She's actually white. She's Oh, no. Oh, God, no. No, no, not that. Um, people's loyalties start reversing in very strange ways. Um, it's just really weird what happens. Like, I feel like they had the... The, the first part of their story done, like it just never had a real clear narrative thread to it, where it just kind of felt like it was all over the place. And some parts of it were really interesting, some parts of it really just fell apart. Um, but you know what? That's the one could make the argument that all the Assassin's Creed games have the problem of the narrative falling apart because of this heavy handed yes. bullshit. <laughs> I will say one of the nice things about this game is that it's just presented at the very beginning like you're watching it. Uh, it's like an Abstergo DVD that you bought, right? Um, it's just this game. So there is no like outside of the animus or who is this person's ancestor or Desmond or any of that Abstergo oh, stuff. Oh, good. Uh, it's just straight up video game. Like Sounds like the perfect Assassin's Creed. Yep. Yeah. Um, and it actually ties into the story in an interesting way where there's a there's <clears throat> I, I don't want to ruin it in case people are going to play the game but there's a there's a part that ties into what you're being shown as this is an abstergo product versus what might actually have happened type of thing that's w- woven into the story and into the gameplay in a really interesting way that I had a lot of fun with. Uh but I'll tell you what I had more fun with. Okay. All right. One of the problems that I have with the Assassin's Creed series, and I've never had any bones about this, is how people don't know that those motherfuckers, Ezio, Connor, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, Edward, well, Edward's a different story because he's a pirate, but uh, Altair, how you've got these guys walking around a town where you've got merchants and all this stuff, head to toe with swords and guns and knives, and everybody's like, who could the assassin be? Did you see what happened there? It happens to me a lot in public, me getting recognized. When you have all your knives and your swords and stuff Uh, on? Most people look at me and they're like, that guy is an alcoholic. Oh, okay. So and they, I mean, they point me out of a crowd. Do they do they point and go, I'm the one laying down. Alcoholino! And then, like, the guards start yeah. chasing you. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, let's, I mean, let's be realistic here. If you stand out, you're going to get pointed out, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah. So, what's interesting about this, and I don't know, like, there's, a, there's some case to be made for the fact that this is the only Assassin's Creed game that has a dress-up mechanic in it. Um, oh, God. But, basically, Aveline has three outfits that she can have and you can go to any of these there's like little safe points on the map that you can go to to mm-hmm. switch so she has three guises and the Look first at that assassin one, with the daisy duke song exactly no no not that not that the first one is what you see on the front of the box which is her kind of pirate assassin-y look at pretty look she looks pretty badass uh the second one is she's very much like a, a prim and proper lady of the times all yep. bouffant hair and a big dress and sure. all that stuff and the third one is a slave Okay. Uh, where she's got this, just you know, it's kind of rags Slave and layout. stuff like that, right? Exactly, with a gold bikini. Um, but all three of those have different like bonuses and weaknesses to them. Like the lady persona can't run up the sides of buildings or jump or really do any acrobatics because of the big dress. Mm-hmm. But that character will get like gain notoriety the slowest out of all three of them. So you're, you know, in Assassin's Creed, I. I don't remember if they had it in the current one, but they had this little thing where as you do more heinous shit, 
uh, this little meter builds up, and once it gets to a certain point, like anytime any guard sees you, they're just going to straight up try to murder you the entire time. Well, the lady persona is able to get away with a lot more shit, but is less mobile and agile. The slave persona can go places that none of the you know the other personas can by basically you can pick up a crate, and then a lot of times the guards will overlook you going into a place. Mm-hmm. They're less suspicious because you're just kind of blending in. It's like with in the, the movies there. when you see them dress as like a waiter at a fancy party. Yeah, and except slavery. Except not, slavery. Not a well, waiter. Yeah. <laughs> uh, except you know slavery. And like the you know the the slave persona is able to use more of the weaponry that the assassin is, but she also has the smallest health bar, so you could take less damage. Yeah, like she can do some free running, but not all the free running. And then the assassin is able to do all of the offensive stuff, but that persona is constantly at like one quarter suspicion so okay. it's always harder to get away with shit well, that sounds like an interesting mechanic it is and it gives you like when they give you an assassination mission you can basically decide like do i want to run along the rooftops or do i want to like try to sneak in as a slave because you can maybe get into the compound as a slave but if you get to the house then they maybe are going to be more on you you go as the lady where you have less ability to traverse the environment it's a really cool mechanic and it's 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 something that i feel i didn't even know this mechanic existed in assassin's creed until this game by far, this is the high point of the entire game because you can buy stuff. Like, you can outfit a gun, so you can buy a very small gun that is weak and only has like a couple shots. You hide it in your vag. And the lady and the slave can use that hide gun. Hide it in their vag. I don't know where they're hiding it. They just kind of whip it out, you know. Of their vag. Of shirt. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's short for vagina. Uh, but it, then, like, it means pussy. <laughs> on the lady persona, you can have a, um, like, she gets this parasol that has a blowgun dart in it. That's an umbrella for you plebeians. Right. So you walk around, look at your pretty, pretty umbrella, and you're just assassinating people by just pointing this thing at them, and you go, boop, and then nice. walk away. I like it. And it's one of the things in Assassin's Creed that I've been missing, where with, in Assassin's Creed 3, and somewhat Pretty umbrellas? Four, pretty umbrellas. I've been missing them. <laughs> uh, in 3 and 4... As opposed to, to two and all the two sequels, you didn't have a way to like subtly go into a crowd and assassinate somebody and then walk away from that without engaging. It's like once right. combat was on, it was on. Yeah. Whereas here, you're able to choose more whether you want to do that or whether you can just get away with just assassinating somebody real quietly and walking away. Um, now, there are... There's equipment upgrades. You know, you can buy all the different swords and, and guns and stuff, and all that takes money. Um, there's also a bunch of outfits, but they don't do shit. Um, in fact, one of the things that I kind of have a problem with with this game is that they have, like most of the Assassin's Creed games, a huge amount of collectible items, and those items will generally give you a special outfit or a special hat or something for yeah. your character. They do nothing. Hmm. They do jack shit. They're just cosmetic. One of them's like an Iron Maiden t-shirt with some holes in it. And yeah, exactly. A pair of sweatpants. The punk rock costume. Yeah. yeah. They're always under suspicion. They've got like four bars the entire time. <laughs> the whole time. Like, kid, get back. You quit skateboarding in <laughs> 1700s Louisiana. Um, so that part of it is really great. I mean, as far as the uh, the actual gameplay, it's it's Assassin's Creed. You know, you've got sure. counter hit. You know, you've got some characters that have to be defense broken. If you played an Assassin's Creed game, you're going to know how this shit works. Um I feel like more and more the combat in Assassin's Creed is becoming less and less interesting. Yes. Uh, because like jump down in there and kind of mash some buttons. Like you can straight up murder an entire town full of guards before they even know what you're doing. Um, uh, so there's that. Now, one of the other problems that I have with this game comes in that there are only four areas total in the entire game. Weird. You have, okay. Uh, New Orleans. You have... The Bayou around New Orleans, which is a shitty area because it's got a lot of water in it. Do you run into Bayou Billy? The Bayou Billy is not there. Disappointing. You, you do assassinate some crocs. Oh, good. Okay. Uh, but uh, Gator fight. There's those two areas, and then there's two other areas in the game where you go to. One you go to a few times to to progress the Templar dumb storyline, and one you go to just so that you can have a blatant like, oh, look, it's Connor. This is totally Assassin's Creed mm. 3, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but all in all, like by the time the game is maybe eight to 12 hours long, depending on how completionist you are about it, I was fucking sick of both of those areas by the time I got done with the game. Like I'd seen Louisiana or uh, New Orleans backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards yeah. throughout the entire thing. Uh, does this Louisiana have open container laws? I didn't see any. Well, 
Mm, I don't believe so. Because that's the pretty much the greatest thing ever. There was a dude on a ship that was just drinking out in the open. Nobody was arresting him, but he was a ship he's captain. He's a ship. He's a captain. Yeah. Um, going further, like uh, the the Bayou. I'm. I, I don't know how you feel about swamps in video games, Jason, but I don't like them generally. They're kind of a pain in the ass often. Uh, but the swamp in in this one had like patches of land and then water in between, and you could swim through the water, but it was a very very slow process. Yeah. Or you could get on a canoe and go a little bit faster down you the channels like, and stuff. S- crocodile surf? No, unfortunately Man. not. Assassin's Creed, when are you going to give us animal surfing? Or, you know, there would be... You remember how in Assassin's Creed 3, how there were plenty of places in the open world where you could go between, like, trees and stuff? Yes. There was some of that, but not enough to be able to... It was just not as well put together as Assassin's Creed 3 or 4 was. Right. Um, Outside of that... Oh, God. There's another thing. Oh, man. I'm sorry. I don't... And another thing. Like, the like when I make a list of pros and cons for this game, my cons are all really specific. My pros are like, it's an Assassin's Creed game, and that outfit system is pretty awesome. That's kind of it. <laughs> um, some of the voice acting in this game mm-hmm. is some of the worst voice acting I've seen in a long time wow. for a AAA game. Like, you've got these characters that all have very French accents, and mm-hmm. some of them are obviously people who are not do not have those accents. <laughs> so you get into an extended conversation with these people, and you're just like, oh, just shut up. They all sound like Gambit from the X-Men cartoon. Per, they sound worse than Gambit from oh, the X-Men no. cartoon. Uh, there's also, and I, I know, okay, bear with me here, because I know how this is going to sound when I first say it. <clears throat> when you're in the world, and you do something out of character, right? Like you're the slave, and you hit the run button to run real fast or whatever. The people on the street, they will do... They will do. They have a few different reactions, but one of them is this, hmm? <laughs> and it sounds about like what I just did. It sounds like a skexy. Yeah, <laughs> and so when you're running through New Orleans, you're hearing this shit all the time. Hmm? 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 <laughs> you're just like, oh, stop it! You know how many times I've heard that one running down the street? How many? Zero. Zero times ever yeah. in the history of your entire life. Ever. Um, so voice acting, decent at places, Demerits. not very good. Yeah, the uh, the facial animation is obviously made for a small screen, and they I know yeah. they've done some work on upresing it, but um, in a lot of ways it doesn't. It's not as evocative or emotive as most of the other Assassin's Creed games, which comes back to that whole like, since this was a Vita game, do you knock off points for that, or do you go, well, it was never intended to be that great in the first place? I mean, the whole game is thirty bucks, so I don't know. You do a cost-benefit analysis there of, of what you expect for $30. But I kind of expect a lot these days for a $30 game. Yeah. I've had some really good $30 games out there. Um, there is no multiplayer at all. So once you get done with the main storyline, there are some side missions that you can go on, which basically are all the same variants that we've seen. Right, collecting a bunch S- of crap. Collect this guy, chase this guy, assassinate this guy, follow this guy and listen to him. Ugh. Um. There are a zillion collectibles in the game, but like I said, all they give you is dresses and slave outfits and stuff like that, yeah. which is not super great. Um, so when you get done with this game, there's not really a whole lot of reason to ever go back and play it ever again. Like It's one of those games where when you get done, you're pretty much just done. Uh, so I think that's... I think that might be... Let me just what? think here. What? Bad voice acting... Kind of shitty facial expressions. Oh, I will say this. The world does look good for an up uh, Vita game. Okay. Like, the city and the environments and all that stuff, they look real good, uh, especially for a $30 game. And once again, like I said before, it plays like an Assassin's Creed game, which they've got that formula down pat by now. Right. Um, until they decide to mess with it on the next one. Yeah, sure. Until Assassin's Creed Five, when they're it's the seventies. Assassin's Creed Five. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> hippie flag like or whatever. Assassin's Creed Four. Uh, juxtaposition. Oh, okay. Or yeah, Snake Eater. Yeah, exactly. Something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think yeah. At the end of the day, I've been wrestling with this for a while. What do you give it. <sighs> uh oh. I'm going between a 2.5 and a 3. I think I'm going to give Ooh. it a 3 at the end of the day. Okay. That's um, oof. that's kind of rough. I mean, the thing is that, once again, 
you come down to it's only thirty dollars. It is a port of a mobile game. Mm-hmm. Um, the problem that I the, and the reason though that I feel like taking stuff off of it is because this game has a lot of potential. This character has a hell of a lot of potential. She's an interesting character with a lot of life and a good backstory. And I really just wish that they had made a full fledged AAA game out of this instead of just like some shovelware. Because let's be honest, this was kind of to me the equivalent of a movie licensed game. Yeah, it was coming out along with Assassin's Creed Three. It had some tie-ins to that game but you know they didn't i never had a reason to play it until it came out on a proper console if they had taken some time and reworked this shit and like fixed some of the rough edges maybe added a little bit more to it this could have been a 60 dollar game that would have been um not as good as four but better than three between somewhere between three and four uh, as it is, it just kind of feels a little bit like an HD cash grab, like we've been seeing, where yeah. they did some cleanup, they did some reworking. Obviously, there was some shit in here that was made for the Vita for touch screen controls that they excised from the game. Um, but it just has so much potential, and it kind of wastes it. And I'm sad, because I doubt we'll ever see another Aveline game ever. And it's a, such a really cool character that I would like to see, you know... Assassin's Creed Liberation Brotherhood. Assassin's That's unfortunate. Creed, colon, 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 whatever, you know. <laughs> Assassin's Creed colon. Right. Assassin's Creed 3, 2, Brotherhood, colon. HD, remix, colonics. A liberator of the enslaved. And an assassin. Who seeks justice. For all.